Structuralism is a theoretical paradigm in sociology, anthropology, linguistics, and semiotics positing that elements of human culture must be understood in terms of their relationship to a larger, overarching system or structure. It works to uncover the structures that underlie all the things that humans do, think, perceive, and feel. Alternatively, as summarized by philosopher Simon Blackburn, structuralism is the belief that phenomena of human life are not intelligible except through their interrelations. These relations constitute a structure, and behind local variations, in the surface phenomena, there are constant laws of abstract culture. Structuralism originated in the early 1900s, in the structural linguistics of Ferdinand de Saussure, and the subsequent Prague, Moscow, and Copenhagen schools of linguistics. In the late 1950s and early 60s, when structural linguistics was facing serious challenges from the likes of Noam Chomsky, and thus fading in importance, an array of scholars in the humanities borrowed Saussure's concepts for use in their respective fields of study. French anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss was arguably the first such scholar, sparking a widespread interest in structuralism. The structuralist mode of reasoning has been applied in a diverse range of fields, including anthropology, sociology, psychology, literary criticism, economics, and architecture. The most prominent thinkers associated with structuralism include Levi Strauss, linguist Roman Jacobson, and psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan. As an intellectual movement, structuralism was initially presumed to be the heir apparent to existentialism. However, by the late 1960s, many of structuralism's basic tenets came under attack from a new wave of predominantly French intellectuals such as the philosopher and historian Michel Foucault, the philosopher and social commentator Jacques Derrida, the Marxist philosopher Louis Althusser, and the literary critic Roland Barthes. Though elements of their work necessarily relate to structuralism and are informed by it, these theorists have generally been referred to as post-structuralists. In the 1970s, structuralism was criticized for its rigidity and ahistoricism. Despite this, many of structuralism's proponents, such as Jacques Lacan, continue to assert an influence on continental philosophy, and many of the fundamental assumptions of some of structuralism's post-structuralist critics are a continuation of structuralism. Overview the origins of structuralism connect with the work of Ferdinand de Saussure on linguistics, along with the linguistics of the Prague and Moscow schools. In brief, de Saussure's structure of linguistics propounded three related concepts. 1. De Saussure argued for a distinction between lang, an idealized abstraction of language, and parole, language as actually used in daily life. He argued that the sign was composed of both a signified, an abstract concept or idea, and a signifier the perceived sound-slash-visual image. 2. Because different languages have different words to describe the same objects or concepts, there is no intrinsic reason why a specific sign is used to express a given signifier. It is thus arbitrary. 3. Signs thus gain their meaning from their relationships and contrasts with other signs. As he wrote, in language, there are only differences, without positive terms. As summarized by philosopher John Surley, de Saussure established that, I understand the sentence the cat is on the mat the way I do, because I know how it would relate to an indefinite indeed infinite set of other sentences, the dog is on the mat, the cat is on the couch, etc. The term structuralism itself appeared in the works of French anthropologist Claude Levi Strauss. The gave rise, in France, to the structuralist movement which spurred the work of such thinkers as Louis Althusser, the psychoanalyst Jacques Lacan, as well as the structural Marxism of Nikos Polansis. Most members of this movement did not describe themselves as being a part of any such movement. Structuralism is closely related to semiotics. Blending Freud and de Saussure, the French, post-structuralist Jacques Lacan applied structuralism to psychoanalysis, and, in a different way, Jean Piaget applied structuralism to the study of psychology. 
but Jean Piaget, who would better define himself as constructivist, considers structuralism as a method and not a doctrine, because for him there exists no structure without a construction, abstract or genetic. Michel Foucault's book The Order of Things examined the history of science to study how structures of epistemology or episteme shaped the way in which people imagined knowledge and knowing, though Foucault would later explicitly deny affiliation with the structuralist movement. In much the same way, American historian of science Thomas Kuhn addressed the structure of formations of science in his seminal work The Structure of Scientific Revolutions. Though less concerned with episteme, Q nonetheless remarked at how coteries of scientists operated under and applied the standard praxis of normal science, deviating from a standard paradigm. Only in instances of irreconcilable anomalies that question a significant body of their work. Although the French theorist Louis Althusser is often associated with a brand of structural social analysis which helped give rise to structural Marxism such association was contested by Althusser himself in the Italian foreword to the second edition of Reading Capital. In this foreword Althusser states the following. Despite the precautions we took to distinguish ourselves from the structuralist ideology, despite the decisive intervention of categories for and structuralism, the terminology we employed was too close in many respects to the structuralist terminology not to give rise to an ambiguity. With a very few exceptions, our interpretation of Marx has generally been recognized and judged in homage to the current fashion as structuralist. We believe that despite the terminological ambiguity, the profound tendency of our texts was not attached to the structuralist ideology. Proponents of structuralism would argue that a specific domain of culture may be understood by means of a structure modeled on language that is distinct both from the organizations of reality and those of ideas or the imagination the third order. In listen psychoanalytic theory, for example, the structural order of the symbolic is distinguished both from the real and the imaginary. Similarly, in Althusser's Marxist theory, the structural order of the capitalist mode of production is distinct both from the actual relations involved in its relations and from the ideological forms in which those relations are understood. According to feminist theorist Alison Assiter, four ideas are common to the various forms of structuralism. First, that a structure determines the position of each element of a whole. Second, that every system has a structure. Third, structural laws deal with coexistence rather than change. Fourth, structures are the real things that lie beneath the surface, or the appearance of meaning. Structuralism in linguistics. See also, structural linguistics. In Ferdinand de Saussure's course in general linguistics, written by Saussure's colleagues after his death and based on student notes, the analysis focuses not on the use of language, called parole or speech, but rather on the underlying system of language, called lang. This approach examines how the elements of language relate to each other in the present, synchronically rather than diachronically. So Sir argued that linguistic signs were composed of two parts. One. A signifier the sound pattern of a word, either in mental projection, as when one silently recites lines from a poem to oneself, or an actual, physical realization as part of a speech act. 2. A signify the concept or meaning of the word. This was quite different from previous approaches that focused on the relationship between words and the things in the world that they designate. Other key notions in structure or linguistics include paradigm, syntagm, and value, though these notions were not fully developed in Saussure's thought. A structural idealism is a class of linguistic units, lexemes, morphemes, or even constructions, that are possible in a certain position, in a given linguistic environment, such as a given sentence, which is called the syntagm. The different functional role of each of these members of the paradigm is called value valor in French. Saussure's course influenced many linguists between World War I and World War II. In the United States, for instance, Leonard Bloomfield developed his own version of structure or linguistics, as did Louis Jelms Levin and Mark and Alf Sommerfeld in Norway. In France Antoine Millet and Emile Benveniste continued Saussure's project. 
most importantly, according to whom, however, members of the Prague School of Linguistics such as Roman Jacobson and Nikolai Trubetskoy conducted research that would be greatly influential. However, by the 1950s Sauscher's linguistic concepts were under heavy criticism and were soon largely abandoned by practicing linguists. Sauscher's views are not held, so far, as I know, by modern linguists, only by literary critics and the occasional philosopher. Strict adherence to Sauscher has elicited strong film and literary theory on a grand scale. One can find dozens of books of literary theory bogged down in signifiers and signifieds, but only a handful that refer to Chomsky. The clearest and most important example of Prague School structuralism lies in phonemics. Rather than simply compiling a list of which sounds occur in a language, the Prague School sought to examine how they were related. They determined that the inventory of sounds in a language could be analyzed in terms of a series of contrasts. Thus in English the sounds slash p slash and slash b slash represent distinct phonemes, because there are cases, minimal pairs, where the contrast between the two is the only difference between two distinct words, e.g., pat and bat. Analyzing sounds in terms of contrastive features also opens up comparative scope. It makes clear, for instance, that the difficulty Japanese speakers have differentiating slash r slash and slash l slash in English is because these sounds are not contrastive in Japanese. Phonology would become the paradigmatic basis for structuralism in a number of different fields. Structuralism in Anthropology According to structural theory in anthropology and social anthropology, meaning is produced and reproduced within a culture through various practices, phenomena, and activities that serve as systems of signification. A structuralist approach may study activities as diverse as food preparation and serving rituals, religious rites, games, literary and non-literary texts and other forms of entertainment to discover the deep structures by which meaning is produced and reproduced within the culture. For example, Levi Strauss analyzed in the 1950s cultural phenomena including mythology, kinship, the alliance theory, and the incest taboo, and food preparation. In addition to these studies, he produced more linguistically focused writings in which he applied Sauscher's distinction between Lang and Perel in his search for the fundamental structures of the human mind, arguing that the structures that form the deep grammar of society originate in the mind and operate in people unconsciously. Levi Strauss took inspiration from mathematics. Another concept utilized in structural anthropology came from the Prague School of Linguistics, where Roman Jacobson and others analyzed sounds based on the presence or absence of certain features, such as voiceless versus voiced. Levi Strauss included this in his conceptualization of the universal structures of the mind, which he held to operate based on pairs of binary opposition such as hot-cold, male-female, culture-nature, cook-draw, or marriageable versus tabooed women. A third influence came from Marcel Mauss, 1872-1950, who had written on gift exchange systems. Based on Mauss, for instance, Levi Strauss argued that kinship systems are based on the exchange of women between groups, a position known as alliance theory, as opposed to the descent base theory described by Edward Evans Pritchard and Meyerforts. While replacing Marcel Mauss at his École Pratique des Hautes Etudes chair, Levi Strauss' writing became widely popular in the 1960s and 1970s, and gave rise to the term structuralism itself. In Britain, authors such as Rodnini demand Edmund Leach were highly influenced by structuralism. Authors such as Maurice Godelier and Emmanuel Terry combined Marxism with structural anthropology in France. In the United States, authors such as Marshall Solins and James Boone built on structuralism to provide their own analysis of human society. Structural anthropology fell out of favor in the early 1980s, for a number of reasons. Don Drade suggests that this was because it made unverifiable assumptions about the universal structures of the human mind. Authors such as Eric Wolf argued that political economy and colonialism should be at the forefront of anthropology. 
More generally, criticisms of structuralism by Pierre Bourdieu led to a concern with how cultural and social structures were changed by human agency and practice, a trend which Sherry Ortner has referred to as practice theory. Some anthropological theorists, however, while finding considerable fault with Levi Strauss's version of structuralism, did not turn away from a fundamental structural basis for human culture. The biogenetic structuralism group for instance argued that some kind of structure or foundation for culture must exist, because all humans inherit the same system of brain structures. They proposed a kind of neuroanthropology which would lay the foundations for a more complete scientific account of cultural similarity and variation by requiring an integration of cultural anthropology and neuroscience a program that theorists such as Victor Turner also embraced. Structuralism in Literary Theory and Criticism In literary theory, structuralist criticism relates literary texts to a larger structure, which may be a particular genre, a range of intertextual connections, a model of a universal narrative structure, or a system of recurrent patterns or motifs. Structuralism argues that there must be a structure in every text, which explains why it is easier for experienced readers than for non-experienced readers to interpret a text. Hence, everything that is written seems to be governed by specific rules or a grammar of literature that one learns in educational institutions and that are to be unmasked. A potential problem of structuralist interpretation is that it can be highly reductive, as scholar Catherine Belsey puts it, the structuralist danger of collapsing all difference. An example of such a reading might be if a student concludes the authors of West Side Story did not write anything really new because their work has the same structure as Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. In both texts a girl and a boy fall in love, a formula with a symbolic operator between them would be boy plus girl, despite the fact that they belong to two groups that hate each other, boys group, girls group or opposing forces, and conflict is resolved by their death. Structuralist readings focus on how the structures of the single text resolve inherent narrative tensions. If a structuralist reading focuses on multiple texts, there must be some way in which those texts unify themselves into a coherent system. The versatility of structuralism is such that a literary critic could make the same claim about a story of two friendly families, boys' family plus girls' family, that arrange a marriage between their children, despite the fact that the children hate each other, boy, girl and then the children commit suicide to escape the arranged marriage. The justification is that the second story's structure is an inversion of the first story's structure. The relationship between the values of love and the two pairs of parties involved have been reversed. Structuralistic literary criticism argues that the literary banter of a text can lay only in new structure, rather than in the specifics of character development and voice in which that structure is expressed. Literary structuralism often follows the lead of Vladimir Propp, Algirdis Julian Grimes, and Claude Levi Strauss in seeking out basic deep elements in stories, myths, and more recently, anecdotes, which are combined in various ways to produce the many versions of the earth story or a myth. There is considerable similarity between structural literary theory and Northrop Frye's archetypal criticism, which is also indebted to the anthropological study of myths. Some critics have also tried to apply the theory to individual works, but the effort to find unique structures in individual literary works runs counter to the structuralist program and has an affinity with new criticism. History and Background Throughout the 1940s and 1950s, existentialism, such as that propounded by Jean-Paul Sartre, was the dominant European intellectual movement. Structuralism rose to prominence in France in the wake of existentialism, particularly in the 1960s. The initial popularity of structuralism in France led to its spread across the globe. Structuralism rejected the concept of human freedom and choice, and focused instead on the way that human experience and us behavior is determined by various structures. The most important initial work on this score was Claude Levi Strauss's 1949 volume The Elementary Structures of Kinship. 
Levi Strauss had known Jacobson during their time together at the New School in New York during WWII, and was influenced by both Jacobson structuralism as well as the American anthropological tradition. In elementary structures he examined kinship systems from a structural point of view, and demonstrated how apparently different social organizations were in fact different permutations of a few basic kinship structures. In the late 1950s he published Structural Anthropology, a collection of essays outlining his program for structuralism. By the early 1960s structuralism as a movement was coming into its own, and some believe that it offered a single unified approach to human life that would embrace all disciplines. Roland Barthes and Jacques Derrida focused on how structuralism could be applied to literature. Dubious Discuss the so-called Gang of Four of Structuralism was Levi Strauss, Lazen, Barthes, and Foucault. Interpretations and General Criticisms Structuralism is less popular today than other approaches such as post-structuralism and deconstruction. Structuralism has often been criticized for being a historical and for favoring deterministic structure of forces over the ability of people to act. As the political turbulence of the 1960s and 1970s, and particularly the student uprisings of May 1968, began affecting academia, issues of power and political struggle moved to the center of people's attention. In the 1980s, deconstruction and its emphasis on the fundamental ambiguity of language rather than its crystalline logical structure became popular. By the end of the century structuralism was seen as an historically important school of thought, but the movements that it spawned rather than structuralism itself commanded attention. Several social thinkers and academics have strongly criticized structuralism or even dismissed it in toto. The French hermeneutic philosopher Paul Ricoeur, 1969, criticized Levi Strauss for constantly overstepping the limits of validity of the structuralist approach, ending up in what Ricoeur described as a Kantianism, without a transcendental subject, anthropologist Adam Cooper, 1973, argued that structuralism came to have something of the momentum of a millennial movement, and some of its adherents felt that they formed a secret society of the seeing in a world of the blind. Conversion was not just a matter of accepting a new paradigm. It was, almost, a question of salvation. Philip Noah Pettit, 1975, called for an abandoning of the positivist dream which Levi Strauss dreamed for semiology arguing that semiology is not to be placed among the natural sciences. Cornelius Custo Riadis, 1975, criticized structuralism as failing to explain symbolic mediation in the social world. He viewed structuralism as a variation on the logicist theme, and he argued that, contrary to what structuralists advocate, language and symbolic systems in general cannot be reduced to logical organizations on the basis of the binary logic of oppositions. Critical theorist Jürgen Habermas, 1985, accused structuralists such as Foucault of being positivists. He remarked that, while Foucault is not an ordinary positivist, he nevertheless paradoxically uses the tools of science to criticize science, see performative contradiction and Foucault-Habermas debate. Sociologist Anthony Giddens, 1993, is another notable critic, while Giddens draws on a range of structuralist themes in his theorizing. He dismisses the structuralist view that the reproduction of social systems is merely a mechanical outcome.